So you are the only people so far, I think, have reported on what it was like inside the suite mm -hmm. where the Clintons were on election night and yeah. how that all evolved. Tell yeah. us about it, Amy, and then John pick up. So uh, they are, uh, Robbie Mook is meeting, um, doing these hourly conference calls inside. They're all set up uh, down the hall from the suite of where the uh, Clintons are. Um, Hillary Clinton is not made up yet. She's still going over her speeches. One speech, really, in particular. The other right. one, she they, doesn't expect to They hadn't to shown give. her the concession right. speech. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and they're <laughs> seeing numbers come in. Florida is a big one. Uh, Bill Clinton is calling advisors, uh, people he knows down in Florida, and finding out the not-so-good news uh, that it's not going well. Uh, and and it starts, you know, they start saying, okay, well, we've lost Florida. Maybe that's an outlier. Maybe North Carolina and Pennsylvania will come yeah, through. Yeah. And then that that isn't happening. Uh, I don't know if you want to pick up there. Yeah, and so, I mean, you know, I think fairly early on, the people that do the data and the people that are looking at the states had a pretty good idea that uh, a lot of what was going on in Florida would be extrapolable to some of those other states. And But they, they held off a little bit and said, look, it's possible this is a regional problem and that it'll be Florida and North Carolina, but that won't, that won't translate mm -hmm. to the Rust yeah. Belt. But the, I think they, they knew in their guts that that was likely to happen. So, uh, you know, throughout this process, uh, our sources tell us that Hillary Clinton was pretty stoic, pretty quiet, pretty okay, mm -hmm, okay. You know, I mean, she she is also smart enough to be to realize yeah. what's going on. Um, and then, uh, sort of late in the evening, um, the White House decides it's over, and uh, David Seamus, the White House political director, calls Robbie Mook, the campaign manager for Clinton, and says, uh, "The president doesn't want you guys to drag this out." Yeah, and uh, that is not persuasive. So President Obama calls Secretary Clinton and says. Essentially the same thing. You need to concede. Don't drag this out. We've got you know continuity of government issue here. We, Trump's mm -hmm. been challenging the election. Boy. He gets off the phone with her. He's clearly not convinced that she has agreed to do that uh, because he calls John Podesta, who has just gone out at the Javits Center and the, said to everybody, let's wait for tomorrow morning to see right. if the votes yeah. change. Calls Podesta says, dude, give it up. And Podesta had worked for him. Uh, at the same time in the Peninsula Hotel where Clinton is, she's, she's making the decision to – uh, to call Donald Trump. I mean, I think the president's call to her was, in fact, persuasive. Yeah. She calls Trump, says those words she, she never expected to say, congratulations, Donald. And then a little bit later, Obama calls her back, and um, and that's when it really hits her. She, Huma Abedin, her, her aide, hands, uh, you know, pulls out a phone and hands it to her and says it's the president. And there's just a visible reaction from Hillary Clinton, like a wince. She doesn't want to take the call. She, she finally... Accepts the phone and uh, and says, you know, Mr. President, I'm sorry. Can you imagine no. that call? I mean, that series of calls, yeah. right? Uh, and Amy, there was one uh, there where also um, Bill was there, of course. Mm -hmm. Bill probably saw the, the train wreck coming before even Hillary did, mm -hmm. or maybe anybody else. Uh, and his buddy Terry McAuliffe calls. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, and basically, you know, that I guess they were planning a, a big party later. Terry was going he to was come gonna up. Kinda, yeah, he was going to go up to the room, and uh, sources tell us that the president, President Clinton, just said, don't bother, don't <laughs> come up to the room. Uh, There's not going to be any party. Yeah, they knew by then. Um, and and he's he's a smart guy. He knows. He sees what's happening and what's what he's hearing in Florida in the beginning of the night. And then and later, Virginia. Yeah. We remember Virginia right. was. Virginia was tight. Uh, yeah, so... No party in the room. And I mean, this is, you know, if you, uh, <laughs> you've read it. Uh, I think Peter's read it. Mm -hmm. Jamie behind the fishbowl glass there has read it. Uh, I think that's the, I, I think no matter how you feel about Hillary Clinton, I think that's a part of the book where, like, you, you oh, just yeah. feel no, this, just, like, it's all this, like, clench of, like, sympathy, um, you know, for somebody who's, like, crestfallen. One of my favorite anecdotes in the whole book, though as told to us by people in the room. Uh, they're sitting there late at night. She's already lost, and suddenly a hotel um, oh, yeah. worker oh. comes in with a tray of Sundays. <laughs> Just like I saw it. that. I was thinking, with sprinkles on them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who ordered the tray of Sundays? And we weren't able to figure this out. They're like, what, what happened? Was an advanced staffer telling them early in the night, like, bring in a tray of Sundays, you know, yeah, to celebrate? Right. 
Right. But, so they're all looking at each other like, what, what's happening? We're all so depressed. Did, and Somebody didn't get the memo. I don't know. I might have wondered the Sunday around that time. That, <laughs> you know, I would eat my Maybe. feelings. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. Yeah, I would eat the Sunday. I, yeah. I eat my feelings, your feelings, Bill's feelings, and Nathan's feelings. 